Light, I just want to remind you that it's almost six, and you know what happens then. When it's time, you'll be transported automatically up to the Ark.
I'm worried about you, Light. You have to heal yourself. Welcome back, Light. Now step forward and offer your Aradia so we can give time back to the world. Pray. As the world dies around me, I offer this blessing. I haven't told you everything about Aradia. Come here and I'll tell you what you need to know. This is Yggdrasil, the Tree of Life. It's a holy tree and its life force is entwined with that of the world. Aradia gives Yggdrasil the power to grow. As the tree grows stronger, so too does the world. With enough Aradia, you can extend its life and push back the Day of Destruction. Up to 13 days, after which God awakens. So the more Aradia I can collect, the bigger that tree will grow. And the bigger the tree, the longer the world has before Doomsday. The destruction began 500 years ago, but you know that. It was when the chaos first flooded into our world. Most of the world was lost immediately under the ocean of chaos. Only one small region survived. The survivors call their island of refuge Nova Chrysalia. The chaos brought destruction and a kind of immortality too. Suddenly everyone stopped growing. It was like we'd lost our time, but if that was a gift, it was a poisoned one. We could not age and neither could new life be born. There were no more children. But although we were ageless, we were not immune to death. Sickness, accidents, and violence could still kill us. Life remained as fragile as it had always been. And so humanity began a new chapter of its history. The population slowly shrinking, the survivors falling into an ennui born of lives that last too long. Eventually, new creeds took hold and new legends created. One of these told of the Savior, a servant of God. She would descend to Nova Chrysalia at the end of the world humanity's last chance for salvation. The Ark is the remains of the artificial cocoon, a planet built of steel back when humanity still dared to dream of greatness. Bunavelza has repurposed the world we built. This is where the souls of the saved are kept, ready to be reborn in the new world. But the people down on the surface have forgotten what this stands for and simply call it a moon. Who am I exactly? It's a question I don't have the answer to. I don't know how I know the things I'm telling you. I don't know who gave me the knowledge. It's not that I have forgotten my past. Some memories are still there, and I can summon them when I want. It's just that I can't recall the emotions they should evoke, as if they're images of someone else's life. I know that I once lived in a great city on the surface of the planet. I know that Snow and I joined forces to try and battle the menace of the chaos. And then, suddenly, I was here. I tried to find out what happened. According to records that still survive, the man called Hope Estime disappeared 169 years ago. But the records and my memory end there. What happened after that? I can only assume I was in the hands of God. I was part of his plan. So he took me and prepared me for the role that I had to play. There are certain areas within Nova Chrysalia that I want you to focus on. Five locations where I'm picking up anomalous chaos readings. And I'm guessing one of those locations is right where Snow is. Yes, exactly. The palace in the city of Yusnod. There is another spot in the heart of Luxarian, the Holy City. 
one more in the scorching sands of the dead dunes. And finally, I've measured large chaos fluctuations at two locations in the wildlands. Four regions, five locations. To be more precise, the goals are people, not places. For example, the chaos activity in and around Snow's palace is linked to him, and the darkness in his heart. It's the same kind of chaos that I'm picking up in the other four locations. And you want me to find these five people? They're your priority, yes. Those people have massive burdens on them. The fate of many rest on their shoulders, and that makes your task all the harder. Helping them will not be easy, even for God's handpicked savior, but I can help you. There's a hard truth we must face. There are thousands of people down in the world waiting to be saved, but you cannot help all of them. It's not possible. I've only got a handful of days. There just isn't enough time, right? This will sound cold, but you need to be efficient. Saving people who are suffering under the heaviest burdens will give you more Aradia, which is good for us. But the greater the burden, the more you might have to do before that soul can be saved. Sometimes, solving someone's problem might just take too long. You're saying I shouldn't waste time on helping the hard cases. I've got to pick and choose who gets saved. Of course it would be best if you could save everyone, but you can't. It's a numbers game, Light. The more souls you save, the more Aradia you can gather and offer to the tree. The time spent helping one person might be better spent saving the souls of ten others. Efficiency by volume, is that it? A numbers game, like you say. Control costs and maximize profits. What is it that they say? Time is money. In this world, all the clocks count to 12, but that wasn't always the case. Back in the old days, all clocks went to 13. Somehow, when the chaos first flooded into the world, we lost that 13th hour. It was one of the great mysteries. No one could figure it out. But happen, it did and the results were dramatic. Space-time has been damaged. Where once each day lasted 26 hours, now only lasts 24. Two hours of every day gone, just like that. The lost time. Light, do you wonder? The more souls you... Thank you. 